praise the name of Jesus. We invite you in, Jesus. We empty ourselves and we ask for all of you, Jesus. It's not less of me and more of you. It's none of me and more of you. It's none of me and all of you. And I just thank you, God. Everyone pray in your hearts as I pray out loud. Pray this in your heart and mean it to God. Father, tonight for the next 30 minutes, I empty myself to listen to you. Because what I have in myself is nothing, but what I have in you is everything. So I empty myself. Time means nothing. The world means nothing. You mean everything. You're all I live for, God. For the next 30 minutes, I'm going to listen to you intently. And then I'm going to take what you talk to me about. Take what you impart into me, Lord God. And I'm going to I'm going to live it. I'm going to be like Jesus. Oh, in his name, we pray that prayer tonight. Amen. Thank you. Oh, God is so good. He's so good to me. He's so good to you. Pastor asked me a few weeks ago, he said, I'm going to go on a conference. Can you cover? I said, well, I need to ask my wife. It's her birthday tonight. But I said, I know what she'll say. You got to do what you, what God wants you to do. I said, I know, but I have to ask. And you know, in the past, I, I would kind of get nervous or, you know, it's like going up to a test time. You feel the pressure and what does God want to do? But it didn't come this time. I'm going to take you on a journey tonight. Our journey with Jesus. It's my journey, but I know it's your journey. But I can talk about it because it's my journey. But I know, God, it's your journey because he's no respecter of persons and we're all on the same journey. So what he's doing in my heart, I know he's doing in your heart. If not, he wants to do in your heart. A lot of things led up to this journey. It, last, it started about three months ago. I've been saved for 31 years. I've been a born-again Christian for 31 years. Have I always acted like it? My family can tell you. But about three months ago, well, let me back up a minute. So when I told you I wasn't nervous, God said, just talk about my goodness. Just talk about my goodness. I said, man, I could talk all night about your goodness. So that's what led into this. This goodness is this journey. About three months ago, I was sitting about where Brother Fern is sitting, or maybe the row back. Just... I'm very faithful to church. I'm here every time I'm in town. I never stay home for some reason, like I just don't feel like it, or uh, I just don't do that. I just, there's an overwhelming commitment inside. I don't know what it is from 31 years ago that I just don't miss. If I'm out of town, maybe, but. So I'm sitting here and not realizing the condition I'm in. That's a dangerous place in the body of Christ. And out of the corner of my eye, I see someone obedient to God do something. Heaven came in. That morning I had a, a word, a tongue and, a word and an interpretation and God started me on a journey that has been really good. I don't know, you can ask my family, I'm talking about God a lot more lately. I mean, 
he's opening me up. Um, I come home today and I told my one son, I said, just as Father said to the son, I am, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, I said, I say to you, you are my son and I am well pleased. You know, I just rolled up, I seen him and God just talked to me that quick and said, that's what he wants to hear. That's what he needs. I hope you all got a long time because God is so good. And I didn't realize until that week and I watched somebody be obedient. I'm pretty lukewarm. And God doesn't like lukewarm. I'm routine. I'm consistent. But am I living it? And in this three months, I've heard so much stuff. It, I'm so full, it'll never come out like, like it polished. But just hear what the Spirit has to say in it. Amen? God told me, after watching an individual, he said, are you being the church? Or are you just playing the church? You know, notes mean nothing when you get the Holy Ghost rolling. You know, Jesus was headed to Jerusalem to Passover. And when he got there, I think he was just taking it all in. And, and he, he got really upset. The only time really we see him get upset and God correlated that with me like he's like are you just doing church business or are you the church Jesus said you know he wanted the temple to be the house of prayer Jesus said are you being the church or are you just playing church he said there's some money tables in your life that need turned upside down some some turning over I thought I was in his will, but I had the world in my will. I was, um, intimidatable, if that's a word. I could be intimidated by situations and I'm not easily intimidated. Um, could be very judgmental. Who do they think they are? That ain't how Jesus would do it. And in this three months, God showed me right back. He said, well, that ain't how Jesus would look at them. He said, be the church. Be the church. What does Ephesians 5 say? Be imitators of God and walk in love. What better example to be the church than to imitate God? Somebody said, oh, you can't. God told me to imitate him and walk in love. You look at the examples when the woman at the well, he didn't, you know, hey. He embraced her. He told her about the water that she would never thirst again. He showed her his goodness. And then when she left, he said, sin no more. 
but he attracted her with his goodness. You know, Romans 2, 4. No. Yes, Romans 2, 4. The goodness of God leadeth man to repentance. Been some people said, well, that, that, that means that um, God's not judging sin or this. When I think of my God's goodness, I think of everything that makes him up. His character, his strongness, his steadfastness. He doesn't waver. He doesn't waver. He doesn't waver so much that he can't stand sin. You know, it's kind of like being in a courtroom and the judge knows the law and the judge feels sorry for you but he can't do anything about it because he knows the law. And you're like, but judge, I can't deviate from the law. Our God is just like that. He can't deviate from the law. But it broke his heart. So what did he do? He made a way. And that way is Jesus. You went up in court. You had no lawyer. The judge it's like, man, I feel so bad for this guy. He has nobody to represent him. And he's guilty to death. I have to sentence him. It's the law. And then he says, ah, oh, wait a minute. We have a special advocate. And it just happens to be my son, God said. And he took my place. He said, Father, can I take their place? The goodness of God. I'm in awe. I'm standing in court and you say my sentence is annulled? This guy took my place? What must I do? Just believe. Just believe. God says just believe that this substitute I gave for you is real. Just take it literal. Amen. God is so good. You could go on all night about how good God is. Oh, God is so good. I hope you... Um, Appreciate the literalness of God too, the, the straightforwardness. Um, it's black and white, but it's full of mercy. Broad is the path that leads to destruction, narrow is the way, and few are the people who find it. But it doesn't deviate, it's there. Just as God must punish sin, he honors righteousness. He honors his son's sacrifice. I heard about two weeks ago, my wife and I, we were at noon at the, um, and the news was on. And it's very seldom for the news to talk about Christianity. first thing we heard was that less people believe in God and the Bible now than 10 years ago. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, 700 Club come on at 1 o'clock and they were talking about the mass exodus of young people from the church. It would be like, you know, you, you raise your kids in the church, they go off to college, and they never do church again. 
And that broke my heart. I don't want that for my family. The saddest thing in my life would be to get to heaven and only half of us be there. And that's not the way God intended. And that's not, that's not the word I'm standing on. I'm standing on train up the child in the way he should go. When he's old, he's going to love Jesus. And it's not going to be because I told him to. It's going to be because the goodness of God. And how is he going to see that goodness? Ephesians. Be imitators of God. How is this world going to see goodness if they don't see it from us? And when I say that, I am preaching to me. If it happens to be for you, which probably is also. But this message was given to me as conviction to my heart. So I see people in a different light in the last few months. I don't know where that, that judgment creeps in over time. In 31 years, I look back, I almost dream about my 31 years and how crazy on fire for the first few and slowly you let the world and you raise family and you and God just told me it's time to be the church again you know in 31 years I don't think since being a Christian that I've had one person come up to me and tell me about Jesus I'm not always acting like a Christian. It's not like they can see it. I work in a regular world, wear dirty clothes, look scroungy at times. I mean, any, I don't, I've never had one person say, hey, what kind of day you have and Jesus loves you. So now, you know, this is God talking to me. How many people have I said something You know, we get so we don't even see the opportunities. We're so brazen, we don't even see the opportunities. And ever since God opened my eyes in this three-month journey, one day just a couple weeks ago, I counted 11 opportunities. And it wasn't like I had to walk up to him and say, it's like, casual conversation and the opening was right there and you could tell it and right in the pit of your stomach God says are you going to do it or are you going to worry about your life are you dead to you yet and alive to me Ooh. so as a the word Lisa used leader I just, I don't, anything that brings praise to me just doesn't feel right. All praise is be unto God. But I, th I think it's fitting for me to bear my heart and my shortcomings first and to let you know I'm human, but with the help of Jesus, we're going we're gonna to be the church. So, you know, how many, how big would this sanctuary have to be if we just showed the goodness of God every day? When we're at work, is it, man, I can't wait to get out of here, this boss, and, you know, this is bad, that. How does anybody see God's goodness if we're all acting like them? Or are we the one that just, no matter what happens, we're willing to help? We're, you know, yeah, things ain't the best, but it don't matter. God's in control. You know, a little different tone, a little, hey, so what? 
I lost my life when I accepted Jesus. I ain't got anything else to lose now. I'm in him. You know, somebody, somebody cuts you off in the grocery store line or you, you get cheated for a quarter or you're a dollar. How come you can't make change right or, you know? Or is it more like, that's okay, honey. God loves you and he took care of all my needs and it'll be fine. You know, I, I'm guarding my heart really close, especially the last week, the last week. I mean, even driving to town, you know, um, some little thing, and I'm just like, nope, I'm not letting that in. And when you don't let that in, you are not offendable. How many, what, what offense? My fight is not against you anyway. My fight is not against flesh and blood. No matter what you say to me, Jesus wasn't offendable. They mocked him, spat upon him, and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Be imitators of God and walk in love. Jesus went and the tax collector and the disciples are all like, the disciples, they're followers of God, followers of Jesus. They didn't yet have the Holy Spirit, but they're followers of Jesus. They've been around him for years, two or three years maybe. I don't know, some different times. I'm not a scholar in that area. Jesus goes to the tax collector and they're like, what are you doing with this guy, you know? Jesus is like, hey, we're going to go have dinner. The goodness of God. He, he changed his, you know. Jesus went around, around, went around preaching, teaching, and healing the sick that were oppressed. I said, God, seems like when I lay hands on people, I, I don't always see anything. He said, uh, are you going to believe what you see? Or are you going to believe what I say? I said, I'll be a fool for you any day, Jesus. Because I'm not out to please man, I'm out to please God. Because I ain't taking anything out of this world. I can't build up no treasure. The only thing I can do is thank him for what he's got for me. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God and the salvation. So I sort of believe that in my heart the goodness of God gets people interested. If you had somebody at work and, and they're, they're like, Quali, you're different. Tell me about it or what's in you. That's the goodness. Sort of getting them. Then you have the power. Then, then the gospel, you know, hey, I know this guy, this Jesus. He's changed my life. I'll never be the same. I laid down my life for his life and I'll never die. Then the gospel being the power of God and the salvation, next step. Hey, yeah, this Jesus, have you ever heard his plan? It's simple. You can't pay your debts, and he can. It don't cost you nothing. All you got to do is believe. Oh, 
if I sell out to Jesus, I, I, don't, I don't. I need to be happy. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled and satisfied. And I think those words don't do it justice. It's more than just filled and satisfied. It's a peace that comes on you that you know, you know, you know you're in the will of God. Any of you that have had kids, you remember when they were just at a certain age and anything you did was just perfect that's how God wants us to look at him yes father uh huh you know best father I love you father anytime you uh, want to remind me of what I said tonight be welcome So back to the, the young people leaving the church. You think it's a possibility that they're tired of here and here and here and not seeing the walk? Do you think they analyze what we do? Do you think they can read between our lines? Especially if they're in your family? I'm sure mine can, and I truly apologize for not walking the walk. But I vow to give Jesus my whole heart, my whole life, and to be the church. Do you vow, vow to be the church with me? So Jesus didn't back away from nothing. You are the light in, in perfect, the darkest darkness. It don't matter how dark it is. If you put light in it, it's light. I don't care if you think there's a thousand demons. One Christian's outnumber them. So just as you take two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in your midst, literal. Let's take Ephesians, literal. Be a for imitators of God and walk in love. You remember WWJD? That was a big thing. I mean, it's kind of died down a little now. They had bracelets and... And you know, to me... I thought of WWJD as a defensive posture. Now, I don't know, if you know a little bit about sports, you have offense and defense. And to me, WWJD was defense. It was like, okay, that means I should not tell a lie. I should not gossip. I should not judge. But... Be imitators of God. What would Jesus do? Is offense. We need to get out and be the church on offense. Cast those things down. Lift up the name of Jesus. Pray for the sick. Speak words. just keep telling myself, you know, and telling my wife, I'm not offendable. Now that Jesus lives in me, I'm not offendable because there's too much to do. As a church, we've had really, this church has been very protected, very guarded about offenses and stuff. 
Our pastor is great at keeping stuff like that. I've been in, well, I've been here since 1993. But before that, I had like three churches in 10 years or something. And it's always about struggles and power and splits and that. But when we walk with Jesus, there is not that. We have the God's work to do. We can't be worried about what's happening, this and little thing. you know. It's what did Jesus tell me to do? If we all look to him, we're all going the same direction because we're all looking to him. Oh, I just, I just appreciate the hunger of God in I mean, it makes me, it makes me feel God. If people want happiness, find God. Hunger and thirst after righteousness and you shall be filled. So you know, in the early church, what did they do when they had a meeting? Psalms, hymns, prayers, and they prayed for each other. How many times do we walk out, and I, I've been so guilty of this, knowing somebody had a need and I didn't even walk over and pray for them in church. I vow not to let that happen again. I want to be the church for God. So as we wrap up tonight, let's pray for one another. If you have some need in your body, just stand up and, and stand up. If you have some need, go ahead. Steve has a need. So two or three of the believing ones it's not a pastor gospel. It's the believing one gospel. If you are a believer, reach out and touch them. And just let's be the church. We are not ashamed of the gospel. Jesus is here. Just start, just start praying for him. In Jesus' name. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, that we're going to take your word literal. We're going to lay hands on the sick. And we're going to see you work in their lives. Father, just thank you so much that our lives are not our own, but are in you. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're in here doing a work. I believe it with all my heart, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.